Hello and welcome to episode one of the Liam and Isle cast. Not, not final on the name, but here we are. Hello, friends. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Yeah. We'll try not to steal the cutlery. This is try number two on this because we actually did the first episode a few weeks ago, but somebody's computer slash recording software decided to shut the bed. Yes, it did. And it's a shame because it was a really good talk too. It was going really well. It was on our top 10 favorite albums. And after about, what, an hour and a half, we got halfway through the list. Mm -hmm. So it was going to be pretty meaty, but there you go. So my fault, or my computer's fault, so technically mine. But here we are. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of our favorite shows. Starting with one in particular, which I convinced my good friend Ayo here to watch. I've convinced just about all of my friends to watch it at some time mm -hmm. or another. And yeah, it's become a sensation in our little circle. I'm speaking, of course, of Cobra Kai. Never dies. Yes, that's right. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Sir. So, I guess my first question to you, and I'm sure we've discussed this before, but my memory is bad. Had you, how familiar were you with the Karate Kid movies before being introduced to the show. I've never watched any of the card Karate Kid movies, but I knew pretty much all through the plots and characters that happened because they were just... Mm -hmm. I mean, even though they're not, like, big, huge movies, like, say, Terminator 1 and 2, they are still so deep in pop culture. Yeah, which... I, I'm going to be honest, I don't fully get it. I think, that, I think they're just okay. I think they're quite average. I think a lot of it's just riding on nostalgia. Oh, absolutely, it's nostalgia. And Something. I have seen a lot of channels that I like to talk about the movies, like Cinemasker and Red Letter Media, so from those two I know someone. Did but you know how the whole idea for the show came to be? You might so have they, told me once, but go ahead. So, the actor for Johnny, whose name escapes me at the moment, William Zabka, he appeared on a little sitcom called How I Met Your Mother, and the plot of the episode was a Barney, I think, one of the main characters, played by Neil Patrick Harris in the show, was arguing that really, in The Karate Kid, Daniel was the villain and Johnny was the hero because Daniel was the real bully. And the creators of Cobra Kai saw this episode and thought that's a pretty good premise for a show. And yeah, and it was. And that's pretty much what the whole first episode of Cobra Kai covered. Do you Daniel's agree with that? I think you could go either way. Yeah, when I mean, you look, Johnny instigated it, but Daniel certainly poured some gasoline on that fire. Yeah, and he did move in on Johnny's girl, even though they were, you know, recently split up. You still, you're still asking for trouble by doing that. Well, even though I, I never seen them, but just with the show, I know exactly what happens every step of the way through those movies. So hold on, so you've still not seen them, huh? No. Okay. Well, I'd recommend the first one, at least. Maybe sometime. Just to tie the knot. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was getting all the people online into to the point where they wanted to watch the movies, and we watched all four. I'd never seen the fourth one before. Oh. Wasn't the best, but... I'm still, I'm still not sure if it's canon. I don't know either. I guess we'll find out in Cobra Kai Season 6. Maybe. Speak which I think they've now said is going to be the final season. Understandable, because there's not much you can more do with that show. No, there certainly isn't. But it's a very interesting show in terms of its history, in the sense that it started off on YouTube Premium, which was YouTube Red at the time, I think, at least in America, but it's always been Premium here in the UK. But it started there, so you could watch the first couple episodes for free, and then you had to get a YouTube Premium account to watch the rest. And then after two seasons, after realizing how wildly successful it was, Netflix bought it, and YouTube Premium, it's, it's, in terms of original content, is kind of a thing of the past now. And for good reason. It's ex incredibly expensive. But yeah, they took that, that basic idea of Johnny being the protagonist and Daniel being the real villain, and they ran with it for like, the first two episodes. first two episodes, you got to see Jan Johnny's side, and then the second one, you got to see Daniel's side. And... Even from that very first episode, which I've seen like seven times now, introducing people to the show, you just knew you, it was something special, something magic. 
Yeah, I was very hesitant to get into this show, even though you said, oh, you'll love it because you do martial arts and it's a really good show, even if you don't like the movies. And it's like, mm-hmm. uh, but... I mean, you can understand where I'm coming from. It's a sequel to a series of movies I've never seen. So yeah. how much can I get out of this? Well, I'm glad you eventually trusted me, because look at you now. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, I was wrong this one time, and you were right this one time. This, this one time, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... The thing is, I don't know anyone... Well, no, that's not true. I do know literally one or two people who dislike it. I know also can't... one person. Uh, is it anyone I know? No, it's a personal okay. friend. Okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay. uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, and... for my personal life, not, uh, not yeah, for my I understand. Line. I know, I know, I was just making a joke. Yep. Yeah. When I ask the people, why don't you like it, they can't really give a reason. And I, I was think, I've been thinking about this recently, and I think what it might be is I think certain people, and I include myself in this in the past, but not anymore, they just can't connect, resonate with like, a kid cast, which is how I feel about the Goonies. Question, watched... how much of the show have, they, have these one or two people watched? I don't think much. Not enough. Maybe one season. Hmm, okay, because my friend, he he said that he watched either three or four episodes. I was like, oh, dude, just give a couple more, because he said that it, he just thought Johnny was too much of an asshole for him to enjoy the show. But I was like, dude, what? one or two more episodes, and you'll start liking him way, way more. Like, I, I, admit, I know he was a, a real prick at the very beginning of the show. I, I know, but just, come on. He wasn't that bad. I thought he was quite lovable even then. I remember speaking to someone, and I, unfortunately I can't remember who it was, I think it was someone at my last job, and yes, it was. And they said, "Well, with any show that I watch, if I get to the fourth episode and I'm not into it, I give up." I'm like, mate, that's a terrible attitude. Oh, oh, that's dude. No, Stranger Things doesn't start getting good till that last episode of the first season. I would say, from what I remember, you get you gotta stick stick it out. You like? I mean, at least give like well, depending how long a season is, but just. Well, yeah. Like a dozen or, or a 10 or 12 episodes at least. Yeah, well, at least one season, unless we're talking about an anime or something, in which case a season could take you a whole year. But yeah, like Dragon Ball. Like Dragon Ball, you know, the Naruto, Bleach. <laughs> and what's that other one? That's Never like, going to start those. One Piece, that's another one. You know that's got over a thousand episodes now. I know. That's the reason I'm never going to start those. No, it's just insurmountable. I'll be binging them until I'm like 50. Yeah. And is it really that good? Is it really going to be worth it? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah I don't understand. I don't understand people with that kind of attitude. But you, I mean, I... You said I that... Do, okay, go, go ahead. Okay, well, I do understand that in the current age we're living in, if you look on Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, uh, Shudder, like, there's literally thousands of shows to pick from. So I get it, I guess, that people just want to hop between them till they find something that clicks with them immediately, but I still think, man, it's just... Yeah, but most of the shows are fucking shite. Well, absolutely. That's what I was going to say. It's all garbage. Like, this is the reason I wanted to pick this. This is one of the few really good shows from the past decade. Yeah. And there's not many shows you can say that are really good from the past decade. Well, started in the past decade, I mean. And consistently good, too. Yeah. I can't think of a bad season or even a bad episode. And of course, it is riding heavily on the wave of nostalgia, but mm. that's okay sometimes. I mean, initially, yeah, but I mean, for me, I didn't have any nostalgic ties to it. No, I know. I'm saying the show is kind of leaning on it a bit. I, I know mean, that. That's what I meant. But it all. My point was that it can capture new audiences who are don't give a shit about the Karate Kid movies. Yeah. I don't really, to be honest. I think they're okay. I wouldn't go out yeah, but you still, to watch them. But you still watch them, so... Mm. Well, I watched the first one. I think I'd seen the second... No, I'd seen the second and the third one at some point. Or maybe I watched the third one in the middle of Cobra Kai. I, I don't remember. I know for a fact I'd seen the first one many times before watching the series. And I stand by what I said. It's fucking overrated, man. Not that good. I got a, a seven out of ten at best. I'm gonna say it's partially the soundtrack. Hmm. Well, it's got that one song that we all know. You're the best around. Well, also, 
What? God damn, what's the Survivor song from the end credits? Burning Heart? No, that's from Rocky IV, dumbass. Oh, fuck, okay. Uh, the Moment check. of Truth. The Moment of Truth, okay. Yeah. You really, <laughs> I only know, I only know you really mix that Karate songs. Kid with Rocky Four, really, dude? I only know two Survivor songs. Plot, hang on, hang on. They're both stories about an underdog becoming... Rocky was not yeah. an underdog in Four. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, fair enough. But If we're talking about the original Rocky and the original Karate Kid, the, the, the Karate Kid is basically Rocky for kids. Really. I'm sure, but they didn't introduce Survivors at Rocky franchise until Three. And at that point, he was already the world champion. Yeah, all right. Well, fair enough. So, up yours. I yeah, I don't know a lot about Survivor. Why would I? Who does? They're yeah, actually a really good band. Are they? Yeah, they actually have a bunch of good songs. I know, I know Burning Heart and Eye of the Tiger. That's it. Yeah. And they're both Moment great. Intrude, to be American fair. Heartbeat. Yeah, like... Okay, I've heard American Heartbeat, actually, to be fair. Okay, well, there you go. Okay, well... All right, well, if you say so. I mean, I'm not... As much as I try to sell myself as one, I'm not really a music guru. I mean, I know a lot about it, but... Yeah, well, uh, they are 80s rock, so I I would know more about it than you, probably. Yeah, well, on that subject, the, even the Cobra Kai soundtrack is phenomenal. You got Ario Speedwagon, who you admitted you don't know, so who's the dumb cultural swine, really? Mm. The sound, the, the, the score, I should say, of the series is great. It's kind of like, it's techno, but with, it's got those electric guitars in there as well. And you've got a lot of... Well, I'm trying to think. There's a track called Like a Dance. And it plays in season two over a montage of when all the Cobra Kai kids are running in the cement mixer. And Daniel's daughter, Samantha, and her heartthrob, Johnny's... It's, it's, see, you try to describe it. It's quite complicated, <laughs> really. Uh, Daniel's students are doing, like, the water. They're on that board in the water. And Like a Dance plays and it. It sort of mixes the styles of Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do. It's mm. got the traditional Okinawan instruments, and it's also got electric guitar and techno, and the score is just underrated. Yeah, and of course, really, a, on a bunch of episodes, they play old 80s rock music. Judas Priest, yeah. Rat, Motley mm. Crue. Yeah. And of course, That's... every time we watched it and they started playing it, I had to immediately say what band, what song, and from what album. Yeah, I do that too. It's fun. Yeah, and I do it with actors as well, much to everyone else's annoyance. Mm -hmm. Watching Game of Thrones. Oh, I can't look because spoilers. Is this this actor? It must have gotten on your tits. <laughs> Just me, you know, humble flexing. Okay. But yeah, the. Cobra Kai, it's not just a treat for the eyes, it's not just a treat for the heart, for the nostalgia, it's also a treat for the ears, like really. Let's move on to my favourite aspect of this show, the characters. Yes. The characters are what sold me. They are all fully fleshed out, all interesting, all funny in their own ways, which is very rare. Almost all of them. <laughs> Kyler, I, still, still the shittiest character in the show. Ah, well, that's that's kind of his role, isn't it? Just to sort of be there, to be the guy to hate. Yeah, the show but, needs one. yeah, but even with, like, Crease and Silver, they're scumbags, but at least they're fun to watch. Kyler's just oh, fucking God. boring. I mean, like, yeah. Silver fucking sold season five. Like, every time he was on screen, I was just, like, grinning and clapping my hands like an idiot. It's like, you're playing with fire, oh. Danny boy. <laughs> he was fantastic. I, I doubted him. I heard he was coming back, and I was like, is this going to work? Like, how are they going to do this? And then I really appreciated how the, the little line that Silver says, oh, I was on a lot of coke in the 80s. And like, well, that, that explains that. Yeah, that makes so much sense from so many perspectives. A, he's a rich businessman in the 80s, and B, yep. he's a war veteran with PTSD. Exactly. It made total sense. Very clever. It's incorporating a lot of like fan theories. Uh, yeah, Silver has just stolen the show. I wish... Okay, well, I'm trying to avoid spoilers here, but... Yeah. I, I... Okay, for anybody who hasn't watched the show, go watch it, turn us off. Yes. Watch the show, come back, and then we can all talk about it. Okay, spoilers yep. on from now on. Yep, okay, so spoilers on. I wish Silver had stuck around longer. I mean, he might still be in... I'm sure he'll still have some presence in Season 6, but then again, I, I really don't know. Season 6? Uh, this is the first time we're going to a new season where I'm like... 
how is this gonna play out? Because end of season one, Chris comes back and Daniel's gonna open up his own karate dojo. Okay, that's okay. what happens. Season two, um, Yale's on a coma and Chris usurps Cobra Kai. Yep, that's yep. what. Yeah, that's what the next season is about. Season mm-hmm. three ends with uh, Daniel and Johnny joining forces to take down Cobra Kai. Okay, that's what the next season is all about. Yep. Season four. Oh, hang on. Season four ends with the. Oh, right. The next, uh, the other Old Valley tournament. Yep. And I can finding out that Silver paid off the referee. Right, right, and... right, right. Thank you. Yeah. And and Chris Tories... gets framed and chosen comes in to help Daniel put an end to Cobra Kai, and that's what season five is about. But I have no fucking idea where they're gonna go with season six. With like, yeah. there's no new dojo that's gonna be. An adversary, Chris. I I don't can't imagine anybody being a, his student at this point, or him even trying to teach. What the fuck is he going to do? Well, I think that's a very good thing because a lot the show gets criticism as all shows do, and I think the one that I've seen the most is that the show is predictable. And to be totally honest, I, I agree to an extent. A little bit. Especially, you know, based on what you've just said, it can, it can be quite formulaic. But the, even when you know what's coming, it still manages to surprise you. I mean, look at the school fight at the end of season two. Like, you knew there was something big was going down. But well, I did not, I did not think Miguel was going to end up in a coma. That's yeah, what well, I'm sure. Absolutely. And actually, I do take back what I said earlier about there being no bad episodes. I still wouldn't say this episode is bad. But it didn't need to exist. Miguel going to Mexico. What was the point? Those were the weakest part of season five. Like, you know exactly what's going to happen. He's going to find his dad. He's going to think his dad is great. But it's going to be revealed that his dad isn't so great. And he's going to go back to America with Johnny. Can we get this over with quickly? And they did. And that's, By and season that's two, exactly it's, how it happened. It's done. But yeah, that, that, sure. was, that was probably the weakest part of the show. Yeah. Totally unnecessary. Just padding. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. It's done so much right, it's allowed a little a little detour. But then season th- episode three happens and a sailor burns down Mike Barton's store. And I'm just like watching the screen with my eyes completely wide. I was like, Jesus, fuck Terry. <laughs> he, there's no limits to that man's insanity. Yeah. I mean, really th- oh my God, I just got that. You play with fire, Danny boy. And he, then he burns it. Fuck. Yep. Son of a bitch, Silver. There was another episode that didn't have a reason to exist, but I still really liked it. It's the one where Johnny goes on a road trip with all his old gang. Oh, that was heartfelt as fuck. I love that. Oh, I, that's what I'm saying. It, did it add anything to the overall story? No. But was it great? Fuck yes. It was incredibly important for Johnny's character development. You think so? Yeah. Well, agree to disagree on that one. I, I think you could have left it out and it wouldn't have done much. Well, what? Okay. Okay. You have to admit that it was a hell of a lot more important than Miguel going to Mexico. Yes, oh, for sure. Definitely. I really enjoyed it. And that, it's kind of crazy that how, just how many actors from the original movies they've gotten back. Like, I'm sure you had the same response in season 5 when Amanda is taking a break from Daniel and she goes out drinking with her girlfriends. And bang, that's the girl from Karate Kid 3. I was like, holy shit. Mm. I, don't e- I don't even care about the character. I don't care about the movie as a whole. But fuck, you got me good. That, that I was like, whoa, hang on, that's her? Uh, wow, okay, that was expertly done. And how well these people have aged. Oh god, yeah. I'm jealous, I really am. I, I'll be so happy if I have a full, long set of hair like Silver has. By the time I'm his age, because God damn it, I'm starting to bold a little bit so far, and just like taking precautions that it doesn't get worse. Mm. Mm. Won't be long till we're on the re- the regain or row gain, or whatever it's called. Not that I would know. But who would you say aged the best overall? I gotta say Daniel, I think. Well, I... depends what you mean by aged the best, because I think William Zabka or Johnny. I think he looks fantastic. He is a bit rugged, but that's a good thing. But if we're talking in terms of aged and just looks smooth as butter, it's got to be 
Ralph Macchio, Daniel. I'd say it's Sean Kanan, a.k.a. Mike Barnes. No, the, the, did you say pretty much all of them? I don't think there's any that have popped up when, ooh, time has not been kind to you. Yeah, that's that's how I felt when I saw Carrie Fisher in the new Star Wars movies. That's like, drugs will do that to you. Well, drugs and uh, bipolar disorder, yeah. But yeah, Sean Kanan, it is... Hang on, how is old is he these days? Mid-50s. God really? damn, that dude doesn't look a day over 40. No. Like, I, I have an absolute man crush on him. I was going to say, like, this show has me questioning my sexuality sometimes, because <laughs> I have the the biggest man crush on Johnny. I really do. He's my favorite character, too. I've Which noticed. I've noticed. It's very unusual for me, because ever since I was a boy, I've always sort of went for the underdog, the lesser known character, because I found them more interesting for whatever reason. Maybe a little bit of contrarianism going on there, I couldn't say for sure. But Cobra Kai breaks that mold. Uh, Johnny is my favorite, and he is the main character. And yeah, I, I love how he sort of represents the the boomer generation. If we oh want to call god, it that. Oh my god, he's such an adorable boomer. Yeah, and, but and just, at times they're they're only pushing a little bit. Like, is did this guy just get frozen for thirty years, and now he's just woken up from it? <laughs> yeah, it is a bit far fetched for yeah. sure. Yeah, like when he says. Same reason there are no women in the army. Just because. As like, that haven't women been on your, in your army for like 20 or 30 years now? Yeah. It, it, surely <laughs> in the 80s they were in the army. Surely. But uh, At least in the 90s. Yeah, well, it's not a can of worms I really want to open anyway. Yeah, let's not. It's, gonna, it's got me let, wanting let, to watch. Let's save modern feminism for another time. Yeah, that, 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 let's save that for the five-hour podcast. Mm. Uh... It's kind of got me wanting to watch that movie Johnny loves so much, even though apparently it's quite mediocre. Iron Eagle. Oh. We thought I think when we watched it, you thought it was Top Gun, and I had to check, and it was a little movie called Iron Eagle. Well, I never watched Top Gun, so not like I would know. Don't even get me started. Uh, there are very few movies I actively dislike. That is one of them. <laughs> and I get a lot of shit for it, but I, I can't stand it. Did you hear that the new one was actually legitimately good? Oh, several times. I've heard it's phenomenal, yeah. Yep. So they are getting the hang of it with bringing back old franchises. I mean, look at the... I haven't seen it, but look at the yep. last Mad Max movie. That speaking, phrase that they are. Speaking of which, we live in a... What fucking timeline are we living in where a sequel to the fucking Karate Kid movies has more respect for continuity, characters, does a better job introducing new characters that jibe with the old characters, while respecting... Yep both the new and the old characters, than fucking Star Wars. It's pathetic, isn't it? The, the two writers of Cobra Kai just do not get enough credit for that kind of thing. <sighs> and credit to them for including like quite risque jokes that wouldn't generally be accepted nowadays. But of course, they, they uh, blanket it by saying, oh, oh, Johnny's a boomer, this is how <laughs> it used to be. So it pleases both sides. He which... says what we're all thinking. Yeah. Gender, yeah. what? This is a prank call. <laughs> Your pussy generation. Like, oh man. That is why he's my favourite. Or one of several reasons at least. My favourite is still Miguel's grandmama. Yep, Sky agrees with you. <laughs> Absolutely the best. Yeah, smoking a joint before <laughs> the tournament. <laughs> when I read that, oh man. And when like Miguel's be... bruised knuckles at the fucking dinner table and his mom like, what did you do? It's like, don't ask. Like, I mean, to be fair, kids these days, they're fucked. They're yes. absolutely fucked. I wouldn't put past them. No, definitely not. Especially with all the smartphones they've got and access to whatever the hell they want. So, mm -hmm. so that, that, that's going to happen. In terms of a character that never fights, but is still in my top five, at least. Amanda. With, of course. Mm -hmm. She's so funny. She, she, she's kind of like the audience. Like, uh, so, the entire future of the Valley depends on this uh, karate tournament. Yeah, so there's that. It's like, yeah, that is pretty ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, she is so good at pointing out how fucking ridiculous some situations are, but still rolling with it. Yeah, and the actress herself, I've seen some interviews with her. She pretty much is Amanda. Like, oh my god, this is great. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Courtney something. Courtney Hengiller. 
Yeah, that's right. H e n g g e l e r. I think no I idea how that's supposed to be pronounced, but oh well. Hangel or I don't know. My favorite moment from the actress, and I think I probably told you this at the time. I was on her Twitter, and she'd replied to a video that had been sent to her, and it just said, "Well, that was an interesting way to spend uh, three minutes, whatever it was." I was like, oh, "What's this?" So I went on the video. Some guy has edited himself into Cobra Kai as Amanda's husband. Like, clearly, <laughs> a slightly unhealthy interest in this character and sent it to the actress. <laughs> and she watched it. Like, oh my god, you're so cool. A lesser actress would have made a horrible, like, all, oh, oh, I'm being harassed online by a crazy fan. Yeah, and she just took it in her strides. Like, well, that was an interesting way to spend three minutes. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I love you. Yeah. Um, I've actually seen that actress years ago in another show, but it was uh, not that good of a show. What show was that? Big Bang Theory. Oh, don't even get me started. Yeah. I used to watch it when I was a kid. I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of it. I, I I have sinned, Father. I I want to repent. <laughs> oh, kids will watch any old shite, though. Yeah. Like, have you ever like, thought of something that you really loved as a kid? And then went back and watched it and thought, what the fuck? Multiple times. Yeah, me too. Same with some games as well. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, kids are <laughs> very low standards. <clears throat> I, I could watch Cobra Kai right fucking now. In season five, this is how into it our little circle has become. We binged the entirety of season five in one go. I was up till eight o'clock in the morning watching it. And when the season came out, I was at work, but it was a very quiet night shift at work. So is there anything to do? No? Well, let me just grab the phone and put on Netflix. Fuck yes. So (laughs) I actually don't remember very much from season five because we just blasted it like that. I've never done that before. Never. Wait, no, I tell a lie. I did watch an entire season of The Sopranos in one day once, but I was literally doing nothing else that day. So, And I was, I think I was having a bit of a, a bad day, so I thought, ah, screw it. Sit on the couch, watch Sopranos. A top five show of mine. But difficult to recommend, because... How can I put this? It's great, The Sopranos, but I think my friend described it best once. He says it should be savoured like a fine whiskey. Just a little sip at a time. It's not... It's not quite binge-worthy material. You have to appreciate its nuance and take it in baby steps. But yeah, the Sopranos, if anyone's listening and hasn't seen it, huge recommendation. In fact, uh, I Empire still haven't Ma- watched it. Well, you you must. But I guess we we could watch it at some point, but maybe, maybe. Empire Magazine rated it as the number one TV show of all time, even above The Wire, which another, I've only seen. Another one I have never watched. I've only seen the first season. Everyone says it's dog shit, and that's a shame because it put my mum and I watched it actually because I was saying, "Oh, this is like the best show of all time." Apparently, let's watch this, and we did, and it was a struggle because season one apparently is pretty bad compared to the rest, and the tagline of the wire is "Listen carefully," and they are not fucking joking. Like you, you could be a native English speaker, you could have your audio up, you could you know have it concert levels and you'd still need the subtitles to keep track of what the hell's going on because it's so rapid fire and but yeah i'm gonna finish that one day if i might start it tonight well no no i won't i've still watch apocalypse now which i've never seen but yeah one, you know, of the the funniest, redu- one of the funniest things in cobra kai for me was watching all the different ways they quote-unquote train martial arts since <laughs> i've been training martial arts for the past mm, 10 or so years mm-hmm. and one thing that we have never done, and I hear people never do in practice, is break wooden boards. But every martial arts movie slash TV show loves to do that. Yeah. I don't even know. What fu- I don't fucking know why. And it's so stupid that they do. Well, I guess it's sort of... Well, sir, I'm speaking in terms of Dragon Ball here specifically. It's sort of a gauge of how powerful you are as a martial artist. Like how many bricks you can break in one go, yeah, but, for but, example. Wooden boards, A, they're so fucking easy to break. Like, legitimately, pathetically easy. 
B, you would have a lot, need to have a stockpile of them all the time. And C, especially since in karate they train barefooted, have fun stepping on splinters. Oh, good point, yeah. There's a James Bond movie called You Only Live Twice, and you see Japanese modern ninjas, and <laughs> they, they, they go a slightly different route. They throw watermelons in the air and put, shatter them with their fists. Well, that's, that's way harder, because watermelons are hard as fuck. No, I wouldn't do it. No way. No, I, so what, I've, I've broken enough bones in my hand. Yeah. I actually have a, a video somewhere from when I was 15? 15? And we were at a swing park, skipping school. Oh, bad boys. And we found a bunch of roof tiles just lying around. So we would set them up on the monkey bars at this uh, swing park. And we were karate chopping them, just like in the movies. And yeah, it, it was pretty easy, actually. I think gravity does most of the work. Yeah, and especially wooden boards. You would need to have so little impact to break those. Yeah. Plus, as you say, is it worth it to get a splinter? Those things suck. Yeah, and people just use, like, big mats so you can punch and kick them, because why would you use boards? You would have to set, have to set them up each time after you break them. Yeah. But this is just nitpicking, but... It, well, let me ask you this. Has your group ever done a public display? We have, yes. No boards there either? No. Huh. I would have thought, of all places... That that would be it, because, you know, it's a cliche. You want to give the people what they want. No, we did demonstration of when against an attacking opponent, because that speaks much louder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right. Than a still wooden board. So, some of your favorite fights in the show. Oh, well, my number one favorite is probably Johnny versus Daniel in season Which four. Which one? Season four. Yeah. Oh, the one, the one where they're all taking bets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, when we that, watched... Then it's in a tie. Which I saw yeah. coming a mile away, but, you know. Yeah, I think I think most of us did. Even though, when we watched it with our group, we had started taking bets on who was going to win. My money was on Johnny. Big surprise. Mm -hmm. And yeah, of course, it ended in a draw. I wish I was there. I could have fucking suckered some money out of you. Yeah. Well, if you'd said it'll end in a draw, I would have said, no, nah, that's not allowed. You have to pick one. Because because that's too obvious. And sure enough, that's what happened. That, no, that is a well, good fight. No, no shit that when <laughs> I'm taking bets, I'm going to bet on the obvious option. Yeah. Well, if you do that in a betting shop, you just get really low odds. So. Or really high odds, I should say. Uh, but yeah, that was a good one. I, I liked the fight. I think it's at the end of season one. Or maybe maybe it's two. I don't remember. It's when Samantha gets really drunk and Miguel and Johnny bring them back to Johnny's place and Daniel shows up and it's a short fight, but it's brutal. Like everything's getting smashed, the TV's coming yeah, off it's the at wall. The very end of season two. Just season before two. the school fight. Right, okay. That's a fucking that that's the same episode, isn't it? It's the start of the episode. That's a good one then. Might have been. I'm almost certain that's the the very beginning of the final episode. Also that shows so well how similar Daniel and Johnny are because Daniel always goes like, oh, that guy's such a hothead and a nutcase. So it's like, hello? You, t you attacked a man in his own home? You broke his fucking TV, his door? What? Yeah. More alike than they realize. Yeah. It's hard for me to pick a number one favorite, but the one I think I've rewatched the most is Hawk versus Kyler. Not not necessarily for the fight, because it's pretty one-sided. But just the... Oh, you mean the, the all Valley Tournament? Yes, in season four. He's like, mm. I'm the guy who's going to win this whole fucking thing. And it's just, oh, that's so cool! And he's my... I think he's my second favourite character, Hawk. He, hasn't, he didn't do a lot in season five, but he was there. Yeah, no. I'm going to call bullshit that he lost to Kenny in season five. Oh, that's right. That's... Absolute bullshit. Like, Hawk has been one of the top fighters, and Kenny is a complete newbie. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck is that shit? How do you go from dressing up as a wizard to beating the karate champ? Mm. Come on. I actually thought Hawk was going to win that tournament, and I was shocked, to be right. Should have taken bets on that. I would have made some 
fat stacks, yo. Who is your least favorite character? I said Kyler for me because he's just so boring. Robbie. Can't stand him. All throughout the show or just specific times? He's getting better. But, yeah, he's always the one that when he's on screen, he's like, oh, I don't care. I really don't care. And as I think I said to you, I just don't buy the way he treats his dad. I don't buy it. And if anyone knows anything about dysfunctional parents, it's me. So I, I can say with a little bit of authority on the subject, no, nah, he's been a dick towards Johnny. Like, yeah, but if, yeah, with Johnny, yeah, he's he's a dick. But I started liking him the, the more he spent time with Daniel. He's gotten better, that's what I'm saying. He's gotten a lot better. Like, up to, say, up to and including season three, like, I couldn't stand them. But season four and five, sure, I can tolerate them. I thought it was fine for the most of season two. Most of it. I don't know. I think he was a bit sneaky with the way he was trying to get about Samantha. And succeeded, actually, now I think about it. I'm not going to deny. He, he was. A little bit sneaky about that. I don't know, just... It's just that I don't like that kind of character in anything. The, the, the perfect guy, you know. I just maybe I'm, maybe I'm jealous to an extent. I don't know, but well, I just I could not be doing with him. Well, when you're pouring water into your cereal, you're not the perfect guy, in my opinion. Oh, that, well, he didn't really have a choice, to be fair. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Yeah, like perfect guy would not be living like that. No, I suppose. But yeah, that's my answer. He's my least favorite. Who do you prefer as the big bad guy of the series? Silver or Crease? Silver. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. I'm a very big fan of evil for evil's sake. Sometimes you just don't need a motivation. Sometimes you're just a cunt. And that can be enough. Crease is nuanced. And I don't think he's all bad. In fact, I know he's not all bad. The way he treated Tori, that wasn't just... That wasn't him being selfish. There was genuine concern there. So there, there's maybe, some goodness in Maybe him. not. I, I'm not, I I'm not, so. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think so. Uh, I do think you think Silver is worse than Kreese? As, as in, a, who's more bad? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Really? Because I, I'd say it's easily Kreese who's the more bigger asshole. Example. Well, Silver was just living his life, and then Kreese is the one who brought him back to that insane place. I mean, much of what Silver does is directly related to Kreese. Like, Kreese carries a lot of that weight. If he right. just minded his own business, Silver would have, mind you, he would have been stuck drinking shitty wine and eating tofu edus. Oh, God. Ugh. You ever tried tofu? I have not. It's not good. It's horrible. And I get you're supposed to put different sauces on it. I did all that. Well, it looks shit. fucking awful. And what is it? Bean curd? I have no, no. clue. I'm almost I mean, That's one of the few things that I did not... At no point did I need to taste that while going to culinary school. <laughs> Thank fuck Count for that. Yourself lucky. It's fucking everywhere now, man. Supermarkets filled with it. Like, where are all these... Right. No, 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 no. I'm not going to go down that path. Good. Let the hate flow through you. Oh, man, it pisses me off. But I don't know. Just need some good old-fashioned ham like Johnny. <laughs> Johnny always needs. Yeah, out the packet. Mm. <laughs> that, that happened in the show, and a couple of us were watching it. And like the fucking hypocrite I am, I went, oh my god. And I do that at least once a week. <laughs> I actually don't even buy ham at this point anymore, so eh, I can talk shit. Yeah, sometimes eat it out of the packet. I know. It's Fucking bad. cave, man. I get that a lot. I used to eat pate with my fingers when I was really stoned, but still. What's pate? What's... Okay, right. Uh, it's like... Uh, it's like a paste. It's like, I don't know, duck liver. And uh, I, don't, I don't eat the duck liver one. I eat either Arden or Brussels pate. I'll send you a picture because like, I... okay, well, you must have point it. Point taken. Point taken. Not, not great thing right, to okay. eat raw with your fucking hands. They're just dipping it with my finger and scooping it into my mouth. So yeah, I get the caveman thing quite a lot. You absolutely Neanderthal. 
Mm-hmm. I was fucking high, okay? I've been high and I haven't done that. And then there was that time I was at a housewarming party and I was really hungry and they didn't have any food in except a bag of potatoes. And you can imagine what happened next. You didn't even cook them, did you? Didn't cook. Nope. Did not. Did Sat. you have the option to cook them? Probably. Couldn't be bothered. We were all drinking. And yeah, I was hungry. I've been drinking plenty of times and never has that been a... Oh, oh there's potatoes, but I, I don't want to cook them. Let's just... Well, Cooking while drunk is a really bad idea. I've done it plenty of times. Well, that's dangerous. You're not supposed to do that. Well, I've been fine. One minor burn on my toe one time, but that's like... It's one more than me, mate. Yeah, but... It, it, it's, it got fine after a couple of weeks. You can't even tell that it was there. I think one of the friends, who's not a friend anymore, but that's a whole other story, at the party described it best. He said, Okay, so we were all just going to sleep... Everything was normal, then you just hear <laughs> me crunching the potato. Please tell me you at least washed them. Nope, or didn't even wash them. Peel them? Nope. Just sat with a bag Holy of potatoes. Holy fuck, nuggets. <laughs> yeah. There was a video of it, but it's long gone. And you can hear the cameraman going, you're a <laughs> disgusting bastard. And I just reply, I do try. Oh. Anyway, Cobra Kai. <laughs> Wonderful tangents we have here. Uh, well, it's the first official podcast. We'll give us time. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll be philosophers by episode five. <sighs> what else is there to say about the show? I mean, we've covered the soundtrack, covered the actors, the characters, the nostalgia. What's left? Uh, well, we can go through some individual characters that are worth of note. Let's do that. What did you think about, I don't remember her name, but Kreese's new side, it, Silver's new sidekick in season five? I think she was boring as fuck. I think she was quite tacked on. Yeah. Kind of hot in a of. weird way, but, you know, besides that, pretty boring. Yeah, I would agree. Like, I, 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 I honestly don't know if she was either supposed to be wearing a karate gi or a fucking dominatrix outfit. <laughs> Can it be both? Yeah, I didn't care for her much. But I get it, you know. The girls have to have someone to fight to. Did Tori do a good... She did do a good turn at the end, didn't she? Yeah, she did. She was yeah, spying, for the, spying for Kreese for the entirety of season five, trying to bring Silver down. That's right. Okay, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's become one of the most interesting characters, I would say. Yeah, initially, she was my least favorite character in the show because I just fucking hated her. Like, seasons two and three, I just like, nope, worst character, fuck off. I remember, I think what you told me at the time was, at least Kreese has some motivation, but Tori's just a bitch. Yeah, like, with Tori, her mom's sick, she has a little brother, she can't, she can't get in trouble with the law and go to Juvie, but, like, oh well, let's just go to the LaRusso's house, thrash the entire place, and commit fucking assault. That'll end up well. She's a hot bitch, though. Barely. She's like 25, by the way. I know, I know, I know, yeah. She's not jailbait. I've checked. No, neither is Mary Mauser, who plays Samantha. I've started to dislike her. Well, actually, no, in season five, she was good. That dream sequence where she was in the flotation tank, that was phenomenal. So that was really good. That was interesting. Sam is... She gets... (sighs) She goes, like, up and down for me, like, constantly. Mm-hmm. Like there's just so many moments of like, yeah, good on you, Sam. Like when she did jump, and from the rooftop, mind you, not the best, not the no, best thing to do, but you know, took on uh, Johnny's advice and did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that when was she cool. did, when she did go to Tori after she find out her hand had been fucked up. Mm-hmm. But then so many bad th- moments like kissing Miguel at the party after they broken up. Yep. What was that all about? Oh God! Like I mean, do you yeah, think you're you're a teenager? You're probably drunk for the first time, but goddamn, oh, the first time? No, no, it definitely wasn't the first time, mate. She was drunk in the very first episode of the show. Was it? At least I think she was. What else were they doing driving about like that? I mean, didn't they say that they were checking their phones? Was she crashed? 
Oh, yeah. I'm like 99% well, sure on this. Yeah. Still, so I'm, I think alcohol was involved. But they, they, okay, now we're just getting into theories at this point. Uh, as you say, she ebbs and flows. She's a, an up and down character. And I don't know, I've kind of lost interest in her. And one of the other really awful moments is when they are at the rooftop and she's telling John, just telling Johnny off, like being a complete bitch to him. It's like, dude. Yeah. What did he ever do to you? Yeah. Like, yes, his trading methods are iffy, oh, no. shall we say, but, you know, still trying to teach you. It's like fucking jackass sometimes, <laughs> running that cement mixer and leaping off the roof. And... What, what if we don't hit the mattress? Try to. Oh, God, I forgot. Aye, there was a mattress down there. That wouldn't have done much, though. Yeah, there's still going to be multiple broken bones. Oh, for sure. That was that. That was season five, right? That was four. Four, fuck man. I, I really need because it was just I, before the second tournament. Right. Okay, got you. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch season five again. But the thing is, my friends have gotten so into it that they want to start from the beginning in preparation for season six, whenever that's due to come out. So I guess that's what we're doing. Hopefully, it's this um, year. I'm almost certain it will be. Oh, is the I I forgot to mention this. One of the best fights is the end fight of season five, when Johnny Chosen and Mike Barnes are all trying to fight for fucking Daniel, like yeah. All the past fuck rivals from the past movies are now fighting on his behalf. Like yeah, I I, I would have I just want to invent a time machine and go back to somebody who watched the Karate Kid trilogy and it's like, hey, in a couple of decades, they're going to make a, a TV show continuing this. And in that, fucking Chosen, Johnny, and Mike are all going to be fighting against the John, yeah, Terry Silver. It's like, you're fucking high. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're in for, friends. And it's going to be better than any of these movies combined. I'm, I'm glad the villain from part four isn't gonna. Sh- I don't. I'm almost certain he's not gonna show up. And thank goodness, he was the worst part of the part four for me. He was so bland, and so predictable, and just not interesting at all. Great actor, Michael Ironside, but a great actor can only do so much with shitty material. I will. I just realized that one thing that I did not predict is when Silver said at the end of season four, when Kreese is being hauled off to jail. Don't worry, John. I got some friends I can call up. I thought he meant Barnes. I 100% thought he meant Barnes. I think everyone did. Yep. And we got him anyway. And he was great. Yeah. One well, of my theories. Way, in a way that I did not expect. Yeah. That whole thing where he's on the phone. That There's how you subvert expectations. Yeah. The, the show has not had a misstep. It's insane. Fucking Ryan Johnson yeah. piece of shit. I'll take any chance to shit on the new Star Wars movies and Disney Star Wars in general. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Go ahead. So I shared a theory with you, and I don't think you're on board, but I'll share it with whoever's listening. Mm-hmm. We have not seen Tori's mum yet. We don't even know her name. I think it's going to be Hilary Swank. How I and I think that would be really cool. That's the. The karate, the next Karate Kid, part four. Mm. I think that would be pretty great. I, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think. Well, it's it's out there as far as theories go, but just imagine how good that would be. Like, oh, it turns out that this bitch, her mum, has been one of the Karate Kids all this time. Now she's really sick, so she probably can't fight, but we'll still get to see her. And I just think it would. They would tie all the characters together just perfectly. Why are they not showing us Tori's mum? Why? What's the big secret? No, well, there's no secret. She's just a sick. We would have seen... But isn't it a perfect opportunity to develop Tori's character a bit by showing us at least one scene with this mum? Oh, God. So, sh- show Tori's softer side? I mean, if they were going to do that, that would have happened, like, season four or five already. 
Like, there's no point anymore because Tori pretty well, much has been redeemed. Well, exactly. So, what? And, but we still haven't seen her. So... Yeah, but my point is that if they wanted to th- throw that nuance there, they would have done it way earlier. I think you underestimate the star power of Hilary Swank. I think she would want to be convinced that this is a successful show and that her image is not going to be tarnished. And she's a busy lady. She's, yeah, she's probably the biggest name of the whole franchise. I mean, what else is... No, that's not saying much. None of these people became big stars. Well, Ralph Macchio, I've seen him in a few movies. Have you seen My Cousin Vinny? The legal movie with Joe Pesci? No. That's a great movie. Well, he's in that. He's in another movie that I can't remember. Like, like literally like the only one I've seen any of these people before is fucking Big Band Theory. I'm right. not joking. Yeah, Courtney, you were hot as fuck in that, even though you were awful in that show. Though. Then again, everybody was awful in that show because the writing was awful. Who did she play? Uh, Sheldon's sister. Oh, I need to look into that. I think the actor for John Kreese, and I should really know his name, that's really bad. Martin... Kobe. What is it? Martin, Martin Kobe. Kobe. It's just Cove, I think. Isn't it just Cove? K-O-V-E. Anyway, V-E. Yeah, I think it's just Cove. Well, anyway, he's in Platoon. Have you seen that? Never heard of it. You've never heard of Platoon? No. Charlie Sheen's in it. He's the main character. Direct, directed by Oliver Stone, who also did Wall Street. Not Wolf of Wall Street, just Wall Street. Have you seen that, Wall Street? Uh, no. Oh, dear. I know. So the name G- Gordon Gecko means nothing to you? No. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, anyway, so uh, I've seen Martin Cove in that. And that's another actor I'd like to touch upon. He play, plays this awful man, Crease. If you watch him in real life... Teddy Bear doesn't begin to describe it. Those are almost is always the, the funniest. Yeah, he's so sweet. You can actually, he's on Cameo, so he's clearly not got issues with pride or, you know, being above all that kind of thing. But yeah, you can hire him right now to do your little video. And he's very much in the spirit. I went on his Cameo page, and the uh, video that plays when you go on it is him in characters, Crease, and. Oh, yeah. How much I love, I love the guy. rates? Like, how, did, how much do they cost? I was asking for a friend. Okay, asking for a friend, you say? Well, let me have a look for you. <laughs> Here he is. Okay. Uh, $200 for a video. About a minute long. Mm. That's a bit much. <laughs> Still. Or you can get a business video for $4,500. Oh my god. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking at the page right now, and every video I see, he's wearing a Cobra Kai shirt. Yeah, so that, that'll that'll be a great way when my parents kick the bucket. Well, then probably Bob really won't be alive at that point anymore. So, okay, never mind. Yeah, well, if they kick the bucket, I think it's safe to assume. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's also in Rambo First Blood, according to this page. I didn't know that. What? Well, there you go. All right, great actor. Get the fuck out of here. What? Where? Oh, it's Rambo First Blood Part 2, bigger pardon, I didn't expand it. And he's in Cagney and Lacey, I didn't know that. Okay, that's one thing I've seen him in, even though I don't remember him at all. Mm-hmm, no. No, he was not in Platoon, that's what I'm thinking of. Rambo First Blood Part 2, that's what I'm thinking of. Forget Platoon. So okay. that was point. That was pointless. But it's only $20 just to message him. <laughs> so I guess you can, yeah. Jesus. I am tempted. It is tempting, for sure. Yeah. Isn't he like these mid-70s? He is currently... Let's see. 77. Holy shit. Yeah, speaking of aging well. Oh god, yeah. He looks in his 50s. How... It's just a sh- How are we going to look like when we're that old? If we make it that far. I mean, you will. You keep fit and healthy and do martial arts. I don't. Mm, fair enough. I sit around playing video games. Eating crap. But anyway. That's for another day. <laughs> like so many other things. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot to cover, friends. But and we will well, Honestly, what do you think is going to happen in Season 6? Because that's the big mystery at this point. I have no idea. And I love it. I do not have a clue. 
It's kind of shocking, no, no character, spoiler alert again, no character in the series has died. Not one. So I think someone's due to kick the bucket. All apart from Johnny's friend. Oh fuck, you're right. I forgot about that. No. Boom. Broke door again. No. no. Yeah. I don't see anybody dying in the last season. Or if anybody dies, it's either Crease or Silver. I think it's going to be Crease. I think Crease is going to die. That is more than likely. Because yeah. that guy does not have anything to live for at this point. No. I think they're going to go harder on making him a tragic character. Just to kill him and then we'll all feel bad. That's There you go. That's my prediction. I mean, they already made him a kind of a tragic character in Season 3, was it? When we see the flashbacks? Yeah. No, that's 2. That's two. Oh, the flashbacks. Yeah, that's 3. That's when they start, anyway. But yeah, that's my prediction, I think. He's going to pull one final stunt, but they're going to hone in on humanizing him. Yeah, just so that, we feel bad when he dies. That's more so on what I meant to say, that Terry is not as bad as Chris. When they were both senseis, like there, it was multiple times Terry trying to wheel in Chris, like, hey, let's let's not go overboard here. Like At first, anyway. Yeah, but then Chris... Pushed his buttons, he pushed them overboard, so you get what created you a monster he, Yep, created a monster he couldn't control. Yeah. What about you? Final prediction, season six. Uh any prediction, any predictions. Uh Johnny and Carmen getting married. That's one. Okay. Them having a baby. Plus. Maybe, depending how big of a time jump they do between seasons of five and six. Mm hmm. Forgot about that. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, surely they're done deals at this point. Something a little bit more adventurous. Go. Uh, I, 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 mean, I, I don't fucking know. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. This is the first time, as you said. Very well. This is the, the first time we don't have a clue. So it's exciting. And Very exciting. But I think that's that's all we have time for today. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to our babble. It's been fun. Episode one, one. If any of you have any subjects you want us to cover, feel mm -hmm. more than welcome to tell us. Yes, we will probably do it if we have an opinion, and we always have an opinion. Yeah. And remember, Cobra Guy never dies. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>